Hello, Amy White with Worthy Written Words. Today we're in our Old Testament journal edition in the book of Esther, chapter 4, 14 through 16. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our napkin from our kit and make it so that it's only one ply. So then after you remove it, you can just throw that away. You're not going to need that bottom part. Then with a pair of scissors, we're going to cut off all the extra white hanging off. It doesn't have to be super close because the white parts will dry mostly clear. Now we're going to line up along the edge of our book and make a full line at the top where we're going to need to cut the napkin off. Save the extra pieces of all the parts you cut off of the napkin because you can use them in other parts of the pages and other parts of the kit. So I'm going to go in and just make these just a little bit more clean cuts in between. Take out some of the extra bulk of the, the white parts. Now using the clear stickers, I'm kind of laying them around my page to figure out where I want them to go. Originally my thought process was I wanted these to go underneath the napkin, kind of poking out. And you can see as I place them here how that was kind of the look that I was going for. However, when I actually glued the napkin down, it, it wouldn't come back up to place it underneath. So if that's something you want to do, I would suggest putting the stickers down first before you do anything with clear gesso to put your napkin on top of it. Otherwise, it'll you'll just have to put them on top like I ended up doing with mine. Next, using this clear gesso from Dina Wakely and a foam brush, I'm going to put this all over my page underneath the napkin and then again on top of the napkin after it's placed down. Now in some books, if you don't cover the entire page with the clear gesso, then it will wrinkle only where you put the gesso and then there will be an uh, you will be able to tell where you gessoed it versus where you didn't. In other books, you can get away with just gessoing the area where you're putting the napkin down. So on one side of my page, I did the entire page, and on the other side, I only did where the napkin went down. And for me, in the Deseret book ones, I didn't really notice a difference either way. But usually, you won't notice the difference until long after it's dried. I recommend gluing the top of the napkin before putting any stickers on if you're not concerned about putting them underneath. That way you're not trying to put clear stickers on top of wet gesso. Whatever you do, wait for the gesso to be dry before attaching any stickers on top of it. But now I'm just going to smooth some clear gesso right on top of the napkin. It may wrinkle in parts, but that's okay. That's totally normal. And if any parts come off with the gesso, you can put it back on and glue it back on. And you can cut parts off that you don't like and put them in other places and you can just kind of rearrange it however you want. I just cut off the strip on the right side of the page that was hanging off the edge and I'm going to save that strip of napkin because later on I'm going to use that and I'm going to apply it to our tab just the same way I did on the book. And so instead of having a white tab, we'll have a colorful tab that matches our napkin pattern. Keeping things real here, on this next page, I put the gesso down, but then I didn't smooth it out with the foam brush before I just went ahead and put the napkin on. So I just wanted to let you know that even though it was really thick as I was patting it down and realized, oh, I didn't smooth that out, it still dried fine and it still worked. So don't worry if you do that and forget to smooth it out, but you still do need to apply the gesso on the top layer as well and definitely smooth that out on the top. I'm going to use excess pieces of the napkin here to add another flower to the top of the page. I just cut out a piece of yellow flower that was um, sitting there and added it as well as some random leaves here and there. Using the glaze pen that comes in your kit, I'm adding polka dots and plus signs around the flowers and I'm completely random in doing this. I tend to try and do them in groups of threes and fives and of varying sizes. And if 
this is your first time using a glaze pen and it's a brand new pen, it's going to be really heavy at first, so you're going to want to practice this on a scrap piece of paper until you feel more comfortable with the flow and how the pen works. It's my absolute favorite pen in the whole world though, and I use it on almost every single layout that I do. You can see on the right of this layout that I did created with a purpose on first on top of the napkins, and I outlined it in a white gel pen. But ultimately I didn't like how it turned out because I felt it was too busy. So I decided to redo it and move it to the bottom and you'll see that later on. Now we're gonna work on the tab. I'm just using leftover gesso that's still on my foam brush to apply it to the tab and then to add the napkin. You can choose whatever colors you like best and you put some on the bottom and some on the top and then cut off the excess. That's all you have to do for it. If you don't have a lot left, then you can get your clear gesso bottle back out and add some manually. Now using the three little word strip stickers, I'm going to add I am called and I'm going to center these by putting the I and the called on the outsides and then centering it with the am in between them. And you want to leave enough space in between all of them so that if you want to outline them with your glaze pen like I do, then you have enough room to do that. So I'm just trying to get them on straight and then I'm going to take my glaze pen and outline each box individually. Now to attach it to the top of my page, I'm going to use the washi tape and I'm going to just attach the bottom portion so that the top is sticking up above. If this isn't sticky enough, this washi tape didn't seem very sticky to me. Some washi tapes are stickier than others, it just depends. You can use some sort of adhesive to put them on. It could be Adtech craft tape, or it could be photo splits, or it could even be a glue stick and that would work. You'll notice that I have a big clip holding my page down and that's because gesso can make your page curl. It's totally normal if that's happening. And over time, as your book is closed, it will flatten back out. So don't panic if your page is like really hard to work with. You can um, get these at any craft store and um, I'm just moving it around as I'm working to different areas. Now using a stapler, I'm going to staple the first side, which is easy to access. And I'm actually stapling it two times straight through the page but it's hard for me to get the stapler closer to the other side, and so I'll show you a little trick that I did to make it look like it's stapled, but it's not actually stapled through the whole thing. All you do is peel the washi tape up and put a staple through just the washi tape, and then you glue the washi tape down to your page. You could do this for the whole thing, and that avoids it going through to the other side of your page, but it gets you the same look. Now using a straight edge, I'm going to line it up and draw a straight line going down using the glaze pen. And I'm just eyeballing where I think I want this to go out and it's about the middle of my black and white sticker. Then I'm going to measure about three fourths of an inch from the bottom up of the page and I'm going to make a mark there with my pencil. And then I'm gonna count three lines and mark with my pencil because I have lines on my margin. So if you don't have line margins, you can come up with your own measuring system, but that's what I chose to do. And then using my glaze pen, I'm going to box off these marks that I made and I'm gonna fill in every other one with my glaze pen all the way up.
Now with the graphite paper, there's a glossy side and a non-glossy side, and we want to make sure we have the glossy side down. And we put our traceable on top of the graphite paper. Now, careful when you go to trace this, you're going to use a ballpoint pen. You don't want it to move around a lot. And also, some graphite papers, you can, um, it could be either graphite or carbon paper. And the difference is that one of them you can erase when you're done with a pencil, uh, the leftovers, so they go away. Uh, this one in your kit, you can't erase. So try and trace very carefully, and anything that shows underneath will have to be covered up with the, the glaze pen. And I'm just going over it with a regular ballpoint pen, and this transfers what I'm tracing to the paper below. Some people like to attach the traceable with washi tape so that it doesn't move on them. That's something you could do. When I get to the bottom of the page, it's really hard for me to, to draw that part, and so I pull up a book of about equal height that I can rest my hand on, and that just helps me to be able to have a more steady hand as I go to do the bottom part. Next, I attempt to erase whatever is left on the page from the graphite paper, and I might get a little bit of it off, but most of all, it's not coming. I haven't figured out the difference yet on what kind will erase and what kind won't. If it is erasable, you have to press really, really hard, and it makes your wrist kind of hurt after a while, but I'm not sure if it's the difference between carbon and graphite, um, so if you know that, let me know. That would be great. But I'm just attempting to kind of clean it up and then I'm going to go through and clean up what I can with my glaze pen and then also a white gel pen. Uh, you can use that to cover up any of the glaze pen that you don't want. It's just a white gel pen and it'll go on top of the, the black and it'll hide it, kind of like white out. Next, using these midliner markers, I'm going to take out a few colors that I think will match and I'm going to test them on a piece of scrap paper to see if I like them or not. And I'm going to just use these colors and I'm going to highlight the parts of the verse that are important to me. And so I end up choosing three different colors to highlight three different parts of the verses. This is the last thing we're doing, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you love the kit. Be sure to subscribe both to the subscription and to the YouTube channel so that you are up to date on all the latest releases. And as usual, all the supplies used in this video will be in the video description with links. I'd appreciate any thumbs up, positive comments, or positive reviews if you like this. And we will see you guys next time. Bye!